Global catalog servers are very, very important to the operation of Active Directory. And as a result, you're probably going to see a question or two about the global catalog server on the exam, specifically configuring it. Now, when you find out all the things that a global catalog server actually does for an Active Directory network, it sounds kind of intimidating that you're going to configure this thing, but configuring it's very simple. Now, first off, let's talk about answering the question, what is a global catalog server? Well, when you think about an Active Directory directory service that maintains a copy of all these objects in a directory for the domain, this can be thousands of objects. It's users, computers, printers, groups, all this stuff. Well, Active Directory tries to use a multi-master replication model to put different pieces of these objects all over the domain so that it can find them very easily. However, the global catalog server is where the complete end-all copy of all those objects is maintained. Now, it also has a partial read-only copy of the objects for all the other domains in the forest as well, because when we start doing cross-domain communication and manipulation of objects and so forth, that starts to get complicated for keeping up with all the permissions and Global Catalog Server helps there as well. Now keep in mind, when you create the first domain controller in a forest, that is automatically set up as the Global Catalog Server. And Global Catalog Servers simply live to maintain a copy of all these objects and then they respond to Global Catalog queries. There's all kinds of situations that would cause the global catalog server to be queried. One good example is when you go in and do a search and say you do find and you're looking for certain users or printers and especially if you say search the entire domain or catalog whatever that that response is there you are doing a global catalog server search. Think of the global catalog server kind of as the white pages if you will the information desk better yet think of it as Google for the Active Directory directory service. That's probably the best one to use. So what exactly does it do? It finds objects. It answers user queries when you search for people or printers. It supplies user principal name authentication. It resolves that UPN when the authenticating domain has no knowledge of the user account. You've gone off into another domain and the other domain says, I don't know who you are. The global catalog server can tell them where to find this person and get that authentication. It also supplies universal group membership information in a multi-domain environment. So this thing does an awful lot of work. Now keep in mind, and I'm not going to go into it here, but Microsoft has a number of recommendations for when and where to place global catalog servers. Little example, within a single domain, they're saying just let all of your domain controllers be global catalog servers because they're not replicating anything. They all have everything. And when we talk about configuring a global catalog server, we're talking really about adding or removing the catalog. Now, there are places that you don't want global catalog servers because of the replication involved. Sometimes you do want them because it makes objects available and you can stop going across wide area uh, network links that are unreliable, those sorts of things. But just keep in mind, there's a number of recommendations that Microsoft has pertaining to when and where to place these things, and I'm not going into that here. We're more concerned in this particular course and on this exam about configuring the thing, not exactly why or where to put them. So let's do a little demo with this. And to add or remove a global catalog, I need to open Active Directory Sites and Services. Show you a shortcut. I'm going to press the Windows key to jump out to the Start menu. And I'm just going to type run, R-U-N, and that will search for the run app. There it is. And I will type D-S-S-I-T-E dot M-S-C and press return or enter. And uh, it should open up Active Directory Sites and Services. And it's clicking and humming and thinking. And I love that live demos. There we go. Active Directory Sites and Services. So I'm going to make this thing full screen. I could have also gone through the Server Manager to get there, but I won't go through that. So notice if I click on Sites, you can see default site first name. 
and I can come on down and there's my server and uh, I can click that server object and over here in the details pane this is the details pane out here where the mouse is moving around and notice my NTDS settings I can right click this and go to properties and you will notice that uh, I should see out here a global catalog and notice right here it is and notice it's grayed out now why is it grayed out because I cannot undo global catalog here I only have one domain controller in my domain if I had multiple domain controllers and this one wasn't a global catalog to add it I simply check it and make the checkbox show up to take it away I just simply uncheck it and it makes this domain controller no longer be a global catalog server so this is how you simply turn it on or turn it off it does all the work keep in mind that if if I could have disabled it or removed it from this server I could have just uncheck this and gone on my merry little way and it would eventually remove all that stuff off of there it's not going to be a cold turkey thing but it will eventually remove everything off so that is how to configure a global catalog server